I had never really paid attention to the finer aspects of a desk setup until the COVID-19 pandemic hit and I began to work from home. Beforehand I had a standard desk with one small monitor connected to my computer, utilising a USB keyboard and mouse, but it was still rudimentary. After seeing multiple desk setups on the internet and social media, I decided that I was going to try and put together one of my own. Over the past 18 or so months, I've gone through several iterations of desk setups trying to find one that works, and I think I've finally settled on one. So let's take a look at my minimal desk setup for autumn of 2021. Let's have a look at the construction of the setup, starting with the actual desk itself. I decided to use the almost ubiquitous IKEA desk hack, utilising two white IKEA Alex drawer units, which cost $90 each. The tabletop of my choice is the IKEA Suljan, a cheaper alternative to the popular Calbee. This is a 74-inch version and I picked it up for about $70. Once I'd positioned the IKEA Alex drawers on the carpet, I gave the desk a quick wipe down and moved on to the next step of attaching cable raceways for cable management. This pack of 5 raceways was just over $20 on Amazon and I attached them to the underside of the tabletop using the included adhesive tape. Once the raceways were in place, I used more heavy duty adhesive tape to attach the power brick to the bottom of the tabletop as well. With power and cable management in place, I then began attaching the LED strip of my choice to the rear side of the desk. I chose to install the LED strip at this point of the construction process to minimise hassle later on. It took a fair bit of time to get it installed and trimmed to the desired length, but it was worth it. With that in place, I moved on to attaching a VESA monitor mount to hold my monitors. The VESA stand was just under $30 off of Amazon and allows me to have more space under the two monitors while keeping things clean and minimal. As you can see, the mount was not central enough the first time and it took me a second attempt to get it right. Once it was in place, I began the process of plugging in multiple cables for power and connectivity that I would need down the road. It took me some time to get all of the cables plugged in and routed through the cable raceways, and this was probably one of the most tedious parts of the project. With progress being made in terms of cable positioning, I was able to add my speakers, as well as some other cables that I have, to connect a different computer for my job. These are 10 foot cables that I routed away from the desk to allow me to have my work laptop off of my desk, making the setup less cluttered. I also installed other small accessories and positioned their cables as well, making good use of the USB ports on the power strip. Then I was able to add my computers and my peripherals to make sure that everything was working correctly, which it was so far. My first round of cable management was not satisfactory enough for me, so the following day I had to redo it all. I really don't like the sight of cable spaghetti and I worked my hardest to make sure no cable drooped down beyond a certain point. The process took about 3 hours, but I used the opportunity to also install some more accent lighting for the desk setup, with these new lights going behind the monitors. Soon all of the items were in place and it was time to place the finishing touches on the setup, making sure all items were properly connected to the USB-C hub I had positioned under the desk, that the sound was coming through the speakers properly, that the seat was adjusted to my height, and any naughty cables that were trying to peek out were hidden away the best they possibly could be. And after a lot of hard work, the desk setup was finally complete.
dive into the nitty gritty. Powering the entire desk setup is the Dell XPS 15 9500. This is my main laptop that I've had for approaching a year, a review on the laptop itself is in the works. This model has the Intel Core i7 processor, 16GB of RAM and 512GB of storage, and I picked it up last year on Black Friday for just shy of $1600, saving about $400 with the holiday promotion. It's got a USB-C port, SD card slot and headphone jack on the right side, and two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left hand side. The Dell XPS is accompanied by a 7 year old MacBook Air that I got years ago as a Christmas present. This used to be my main computer, but these days I use it for music production and as a video playback station for my visual designing tasks. Along with the XPS, it stands in a cheap dual laptop stand on the left side of my desk. The XPS is connected to a USB-C hub made by Vava. The hub is hidden under the desk and is connected to the laptop using a USB-C extension cable, providing power, video, and peripheral connection all through one cable. The dual monitors are the focal point of my setup. Mounted on the VESA stand are two Dell P2419H 24-inch monitors. I've had these both for about 17 or 18 months, one a little bit longer than the other, and they were about $179 each at the time of purchase. They are good quality, but the only issue I've had with them is getting them both to have the same colour accuracy has been a problem, especially when doing my visual design work but the included USB ports on the monitors make up for that issue. They allow me to connect other devices and thumb drives quickly and easily, without the need for a separate hub. I have a 1TB Samsung T5 SSD connected to one monitor at all times, as well as other small USB accessories. My keyboard of choice is the Logitech MX Keys Advanced. I always said I would never spend $100 on a keyboard, but this has changed my mind. I've tried multiple Bluetooth keyboards and each one before this has had problems. Whether it was a delay in the keystroke response, poor battery life, or something else. This keyboard has solved all of those problems. The keys are soft and quiet to type on, and the response time is just as good as a USB keyboard. The backlight is also very useful in dark environments, which is a lot of the time in my case, as I work at night. The battery life is about 10 days at a time, but that can be extended quite easily if I turn off the backlight. And best of all, it charges with USB-C. I have it connected to my Dell XPS and MacBook Air through Bluetooth. It is pricey at $100, but for me, it's worth it. The mouse is the Jellycomb MS040, a much cheaper alternative to the popular MX Master. I cannot find it anymore unfortunately, but it was about $24 at the time of purchase, and I've had it for 8 or so months. It has an ergonomic shape to it which is really good for your hand, and it suits me as I spend a lot of time holding the mouse. It can connect to up to three devices, two through Bluetooth and one through USB. It slides very easily over the Sargent tabletop, so I don't need a mouse pad. I'm a musician and I appreciate great sounding music, but to appreciate it properly, you need a good set of speakers. At the same time, good speakers are often pricey and I didn't want to break the bank while buying some. So after some browsing, I settled on the Sanyun SW208 bookshelf speakers. They were $70 at the time of purchase and they can be connected to a device through Bluetooth, 3.5mm input jack, or USB. For flexibility, I chose the USB option to connect the speakers to the VAVA hub underneath the desk, leaving the 3.5mm input jack for something else, in case I need to plug in an auxiliary device for example. They may not be the best speakers in the world, but they sound nice for the things I use them for. 
They get very quiet, and most of the time I have them on the 50% volume level. There are a few EQ knobs on the left monitor for small adjustments. The little video I took to capture the audio doesn't do it justice. Have a listen. Other things I have on the desk include a wireless charger for charging my Apple Watch and my iPhone 12, the latter of which I'm using to film this video. It's not the fastest charger in the world, but it's fast enough for me. I also have a pair of headphones, the One Audio A70 to be precise, resting on a headphone stand next to the wireless charger. I use that when I'm not using the Sanyun speakers. Other accessories include a desk light, which is mounted on top and between the two Dell monitors, and is especially useful for working at night, and exposing all of the dust that collects in that area. On top of the desk light is a cheap webcam I got at the beginning of the pandemic for conference calls. It's not much, but it'll do for now. I also have two coiled cables from Cable Creation that I keep within easy reach. One is micro USB for older devices, and the other is USB-C for newer devices that have it. Keeping them here allows me to charge my frequently used devices, such as my keyboard, mouse, and even Kindle Fire and headphones, without having to go hunting for a cable. The LED strip I have is the Govi RGB IC Segmented LED Light Strip. It runs along the sides and rear of the Salgen tabletop and contains different light segments for many different pattern creations. Accompanying those strips are the Govi Plus LED bars that I have on each monitor shining on the wall behind. All of the LED lights are controllable using Bluetooth, allowing me to use my iPhone and Siri to change the colors. Most of the time, however, they stay on blue, as it is a relaxing color that helps me focus on work. Last but certainly not least is my chair. After all, I do need somewhere to sit. The chair I have is the IKEA Mill Burget, and I've had this chair for several years now. It was about $70 when purchased, but it's around $100 now. It's a very comfortable chair and one that I sat in comfortably when I was actually recovering from surgery. My only complaint is that on the front of the chair, the plastic support that holds up the arm pads prevents me from pulling the chair in as far as I'd like it to go. Still, I've had it for years and it's never given me any problems. I spent over 5 hours messing with the cable management to get it to look the best I possibly could. It wasn't easy, but I can't stand seeing cable mess, and with the coiled cables dangling down like they are, it wasn't going to be 100% perfect. But that's a case where I'll take function over form. The good thing is, unless you get on your hands and knees, you're not going to be able to see the cables. They're off the floor and they're not dangling too low, which is perfect as it allows the robotic vacuum cleaner to get underneath the desk and clean easily. There are five main tasks that I accomplish at this setup. School, my part-time job, my visual design work, web development work, and creative writing. For most of those, the desk setup is already practical. All I have to do is sit down and start working. The dual monitor setup allows me to have multiple windows open to cross-reference, or to have my assignment on one monitor and my rubric on the other. For web development, I can have my code on one monitor, with my web browser on another, allowing me to design with the full monitor width and height in mind. When the time comes for my visual design work, I can pop open my MacBook Air and open the presentation program, and I can also open my control and visualization programs on each monitor connected to the XPS and get to work designing.
This is what it looks like in the middle of one of my visual design sessions, and you can see that despite being in the middle of work, the desk setup is still very clean. The same goes for my other tasks. The point is still the same. Regardless of what I'm doing, I like the desk to be clutter-free to help me stay focused on my work. It's taken months to come to this point, but I am definitely more than happy with this desk setup configuration. So that is it for this video, I hope you enjoyed looking at my desk setup from the past couple of months. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like, whether you are on Instagram or on YouTube, um, it would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.